hi everyone so this is the video on universal basic income in this video i'm going to discuss about what is the idea of ubi why sikkim intends to implement the universal basic income whom does it benefit and whom can it harm and in what ways why india needs ubi or does india actually needs ubi or not so don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all the updates on the important topics and uh, do press the bell icon which is next to the subscribe button so that you do not miss any update regarding the videos so let's see what exactly is the universal basic income what is the recent announcement and how we are going to implement this in sikkim so the announcement which tells about the universal basic income is that sikkim is all set to become the first state in the country to roll out this universal basic income so where the idea is that every person should have the right to basic income to cover the needs just by the virtue of being the citizen of that country so this is what exactly the universal basic income tells about that a particular person a person residing in a country has a right to basic income to cover the needs or to suffice his life so sikkim ruling party the sikkim democratic front has decided to include ubi in the uh, coming assembly elections and they aim to implement the scheme by 2022 they have already started the process to introduce the unconditional direct ca cash transfers and they will implement the scheme by 2022 so this is what the announcement is all about that the sikkim is going to set or it going to become the first state in the country to roll out universal basic income on a real basis earlier there was this scheme universal basic income which was introduced in the uh, in some another state i'll be discussing about that state on pilot basis but now this time sikkim is all set to become the first state to roll out on the uh, national level now the question arises what exactly is the universal basic income how this concept has been introduced and what exactly this ubi the universal basic income is so in simple ones is words if i have to explain ubi it means that everyone has access to the minimum amount of money to suffice their lives or it is a form of a social security in which all the residents mind it all residents so all the residents of the country receive the unconditional sum of money in an addition to the income they are earning from elsewhere so we have come up to the point of two components of ubi the first one is the universality and another one is unconditionality which actually uh, summarizes the whole concept of universal basic income as the name itself is universal basic income income so the very first component is universality another one is unconditionality now what exactly these two term mean and uh, what is their significance with respect to the universal basic income so universality is the uh, is basically when the cash will be paid irrespective of any kind of discrimination so whether rich or poor there is no discrimination or uh, we could we can discuss about the religion as well so there is no discrimination on the basis of any uh, category but everyone would be getting the minimum amount of money which would be equal for all and uh, it this money is to ensure that they suffice their lives another com component of ubi is the unconditionality that means no conditions either they are employed unemployed or any other factor doesn't matter all that matters is no conditions without any questions asked the money the minimum amount of money would be transferred to the person so this is what the idea of universal basic income is all about and uh, after discussing these two components we have come to the point now like how this ubi is going to work how uh, the ubi how sikkim is going to implement ubi what are the different features of ubi so if we talk about the ubi working or if we talk about the implementation of ubi so there are five basic features that is first the periodic payment another one cash unconditionality and universality are the two components which i have already discussed and another last one is the all citizen so first one is the payments at the periodic regular intervals or the pm payments are done on a regular basis they are not just one time grant given to a person so they are not one time grant but it is the periodic payment so maybe the people will be getting the monthly payments or annual payments or weekly payments usually the idea is giving the monthly payments to the people another one and the very important thing is it would be paid in 
cash. No vouchers, no food vouchers, no service vouchers would be there, but the amount or the universal basic income would be paid in cash. There, it would, it is a direct cash, direct transfer to the bank account of the person, irrespective of the individuality of the person. Another very important factor is unconditionality. Now, unconditionally, that means no questions asked, but the amount would be transferred to the person's bank account or the cash would be given to the individuals. Universality, as the name suggests, rich, poor, female, male, old, children, nothing matters, but everyone, every individual would, would be getting the uh, universal payment or they would be getting the minimum amount of basic income. The last factor or feature of the UBI working revolves around all citizens. No matter what, but each and every individual of the country, if it is implemented in the whole country, then everyone in the country would be getting the uh, minimum amount of income. So these are the five features which uh, briefly describes about the universal basic income, that is the periodic payment, regular payments, not the uh, one-time grants. Another one is the cash payment, no vouchers would be given, no free services. For example, if we talk about the midday meal, so in the midday meal, they provide, they provide the food to the children. But in the UBI, the children would be getting the minimum amount of cash. So this means that typically this UBI would require the uh, subsumption, uh, assumption or the subsumption of the other subsidies and allowances in order to uh, free up the resources. So there are already many schemes going on in the country and to uh, finance or to source, find the source of the universal basic income or to provide the universal basic income, there needs to be source of fund. So this under this scheme, they would be subsuming other subsidies and allowances and they would be providing the minimum amount of money at a regular regular periodic basis or are at a, or at a regular interval to the person this point makes me come to the point of the pros of ubi what are the advantages of ubi as we know that it would be given to every individual that is one of the uh, very best advantage of ubi the amount would be given in cash another very important feature of ubi so let's look at what exactly is the what exactly are the pros of UBI. The very first thing is to combat poverty and inequality. This is the basic agenda or this is the basic reason behind coming up with the universal basic income so that every person in the country is living a life they can suffice with. So the basic income security to combat poverty and inequality is required and it would be done through this unconditional periodic payment no matter what a fixed payment will be received. So no matter what a fixed payment would be there even if you are employed or not employed, the payment would be given to you on a periodic interval. Next uh, important feature or important factor of UBI is the it, it gives more choice to the citizen. So suppose there is enough amount of food available with the citizens, with the family over there and they need to uh, spend the amount in some other condition. Therefore, it gives them the choice to use that, that cash whenever or wherever they require. So the as the amount will be available in cash, they have the better choice and options to spend the money. Which comes to the point that direct cash transfer, which is very much related to the more choice to the citizens, the assistance would be provided in cash. There would be no vouchers or services provided under the universal basic income. Next very important point is boost to the financial inclusion. How they are going to boost the financial inclusion or how they are including the every citizen of country with the help of this universal basic income. So it promotes the formal banking. What would happen? The cash would be transferred or the amount would be transferred in the bank account. So it promotes the formal banking system in the urban and the rural, rural areas. We have already uh, know about, we already know about this Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana where the uh, it will prevent the indebtedness and the better inclusion of the rural people in the country so financial inclusion the there is a boost to the financial inclusion in the country another very important advantage of this uh, ubi is the women empowerment now you might be thinking why women empowerment and how women empowerment so they are income independent they would be getting a certain amount of money every month or at a periodic interval therefore they are in, uh, independent of the income they do not need to depend upon the person to get the income they are getting the income on their own another thing it promotes the gender equality as well as everyone would be earning there would be women empowerment as well 
So as the money would be provided irrespective of the factors related to the individual, therefore there are various advantages of the universal basic income and the very important one is to combat the poverty and inequality so that every person in the country, every person uh, in the country get the right or has the right to live their life sufficiently. If there are advantages of UBI, then at the same time there are cons of UBI as well. So what are the disadvantages of UBI or how UBI is going to affect our economy? The very first point in this is that the reduction in the labor supply. So what would happen? There would be no motivation to work. You are sitting idle at your home. You would be getting the minimum amount of money. You are not working. You are not required to work as well. Therefore, there is reduction in the uh, labor supply. People would not be motivated to work and they would get uh, there would be less taxable income in the country. Along with this one factor which is uh, very much related to India is that India is a labor intensive country and there is high demand of labor from India in another countries as well. So it is counterproductive to the fact that there is cheaper lab cheap labor product availability in India. So the very first disadvantage is reduction in the labor supply or the less motivation for the people to work. Another one is the increase in the fiscal deficit. Already there is a huge fiscal deficit in the country as far as the economic survey 2016 and 17 tells about. Along with this it was found in the similar survey that this UBI will reduce the poverty. So this will reduce the poverty to 0.5% but that would cost between 4 to 5% of GDP. Now this is a huge number. Why? Because the currently, because currently the schemes which are already going on in the country, the centrally sponsored schemes which are going in the country or the central schemes which are going in the country, they cost about 3% of the GDP. So if we want to in decrease the poverty to 0.5%, which is the ultimate aim of the universal basic income, then we are adding on to the fiscal deficit by costing it 4 to 5% of GDP. Therefore, ultimately the universal basic income is kind of burden or, or additional burden on the government. Next factor is inequality. So to explain this factor, it means that Mukesh Ambani and a child born in the BPL family would be getting the same amount of money at a similar periodic interval and irrespective of the income they are already generating. So this would eventually promote the inequality among the people or they would feel biased on the basis of this distribution of income. Why? Because the same amount is being provided to the richest man in the country and the same amount is being provided to the poor. Therefore, it is kind of increasing or they, it is contributing towards the inequality if the in, if all the individuals of the country are being covered under the universal basic income. Next very important factor is the inflation. So the purchasing power of the rupee reduces due to the inflation. What would happen? Everyone has the same amount of money or everyone would be getting the same amount of money. They have the money to spend thus increasing the inflation. Hence it is required that government adjust this uh, UBI from time to time. So in case the economy is not catching up with the inflation then this would lead to the financial disaster. Therefore these the as far as the pros of UBI are concerned they are very, they are very important but we cannot leave behind the cons of universal basic income as well as they are affecting the economy as, as a whole. Now but the announcement was that the Sikkim is going to implement. Why Sikkim? Why they are coming up with this universal basic income or why just uh, we have decided that Sikkim would be the one to implement the universal basic income or they would soon rule, roll out this universal basic income. So what is the purpose behind choosing Sikkim? The very first factor is Sikkim is the ideal uh, testing ground for the universal basic income and it has also the one of the fact regarding is the it's the world's first organic state. Apart from this, the literacy rate in the country has increased to, increased to somewhat 82% in 2011 from 68%. So earlier it was 68.8% in 2001 and according to the 2011 census the literacy rate was 82% which is among the country's highest. Another very important factor is that Sikkim is the least populated, least populated state in the country. So it was found in the 2011 census that Sikkim is the least populated state in the country country and the BPL population that is the below poverty line population in Sikkim is approximately 8.19% as of 
as compared to the national average of 21.99 percentage so this is the national average of bpl in india and the bpl population in sikkim is 8.19% which is very very low from 21.9% which is the national average so two factors the literacy rate the least populated state and the bpl population these are some of the factors which have contributed towards the uh, to adopt the sikkim as the universal basic income state another very very important factor and the ultimate source of income for sikkim regarding the universal basic income is that they is it is the surplus power generating state now what does this mean so currently sikkim is producing 2200 megawatt of the uh, power through their hydro project and they are exporting 90% of this now this means that there is a steady revenue of the state as they are just uh, exhausting or just using the 10% of the 2200 which is approximately 222 megawatts of the energy and rest is being exported to generate the steady income so the stream of income is not there in other states therefore this it this it this makes the sikkim the surplus power generating state and the power generation is considered to increase to 3000 megawatt in future so this means that sikkim is already generating enough amount of uh, surplus to suffice their population therefore they have this potential to adopt the universal basic income at the same time when we are talking about sikkim or india we have come to the point we need to look at the uh, ubi across the world what is the status of universal basic income is it the first time that india is going to implement it or the other countries have already adopted and uh, discontinued this plan so the very first thing is that finland recently fin finland has concluded this experiment and it was launched in january 2017 now they have concluded this experiment because uh, there was some restricted payment to certain groups which actually leaves the beneficiaries behind so it was not contributing much towards the uh, unemployment it was not contributing towards the poverty over there but it was kind of additional burden on the government therefore they decided to scrap this universal basic income similar was the situation with the canada where they have this 3 year basic income trial but just after one year they scrapped this universal basic income idea now we need to look at the point we have already talked about this sikkim now we need to look at the point why india and ubi why we need to consider ubi so very first thing is currently they as per the budget of the financial year 8 2018 uh, it showed that there were approximately 950 central sector and centrally sponsored sub schemes we are not talking about the state schemes or the state government scheme but currently we are talking about just the central government scheme where there are 950 as we know that when we are going to implement upi on the uh, national level or on the state level we are going to subsume these schemes which are already there and this was the basic agenda with the sikkim as well they decided to subsume all the schemes which are going in the state with just one scheme that is the universal basic income also if we talk about the already going scheme that are the food subsidies which are given by the government the welfare schemes narega scst avas yojana or some other schemes related to health and education the urea uh, subsidies the fertilizers the petroleum subsidies if we talk about then it is already contributing towards 4.1 lakh crore so this is what actually they are contributing or this is what the expenditure of the government on the already going scheme but if we talk about the 2/3 of india's 30 crore households we are just talking about the 2/3 of the india's 30 crore households and if we give them rupees 1000 monthly so this is the basic income which is not even enough to suffice their life but if we talk about just the 1000 rupees given to the individuals monthly that is the universal basic income it would cost 2.4 lakh crores annually we are just talking about the 2/3 of the india's 30 crore households and just the 1000 monthly universal basic income which is very less. if we even talk about then 3000 rupees 2 to 3000 rupees would be uh, would somehow be the suf uh, sufficient amount to uh, live their lives just at the bar level or we could say that they can just fulfill their basic needs in their life by this 2000 to 3000 universal basic income so it has been found that it would account for 5% of the gdp by the budget allocation where these schemes these already going schemes are contributing or it they stand that 23% of the gdp by by the budget allocation so kind of additional burden on the government as well 
Now, this is not the first time that India is thinking about the universal basic income, but it was already launched in 2010 in Madhya Pradesh as a pilot project. So, a small UBI scheme was launched at that particular time in 2010 and it involved 20 villages where the results were positive and the people spent more on the healthcare, food and children, uh, children's schools as well. So, if we talk about the pilot project which was launched in Madhya Pradesh, then it was kind of successful project because it was just launched in 20 villages and it was easy to maintain or curb the uh, expenditure over there. Another very important thing regarding the uh, UBI is that we even don't know on what uh, parameters or on, on what things the people are going to spend their money. They might not spend on the nutritional uh, food as well or they might waste their money or uh, somewhere which is not even required. Therefore, there is this fact that whether cash should be provided or whether it, would, it should be provided to all the individuals. So, there are various, various factors before we implement this UBI in on the national level. Now we have come to the question, does India actually need UBI? Is there a need that universal basic income be implemented or the scheme be implemented in India by subsuming all the other schemes which are going in the country? The answer is uh, somewhat no. Why? Because India needs rationalization of the subsidies. There are already so many subsidies which are being there, but the targeting of that these subsidies is not efficient. So we need better targeting and operational efficiency rather than the one scheme which is universal basic income which is once implemented it would become difficult to uh, reverse this scheme. So what actually is required to uh, remove the poverty from the country is that it can be removed with the sustained higher growth uh, rather than creating the permanent measures like universal basic income which will be irreversible in the future or it would become very difficult to uh, reverse the universal basic income if we first if we start with it. So the idea should be to save cost with better targeting. The cost, the amount of money should be should reach the needy people rather than the other sections of the society. So this is all about the universal basic income. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel Anuj Jindal. There's a button over here which you can press. Do like the video and share the video with the people. Along with this, if you have any feedback or you want us to prepare any video on some topic, Mention that in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching the video.